Section 4.7, Change of Basis. If s equals v1 through vn is a basis for a finite dimensional vector space v, and if vs equals c1, c2 through cn is the coordinate vector of v relative to s, then the mapping v to vs creates a connection, which is actually a one-to-one -one correspondence between vectors in the general vector space v and vectors in the Euclidean vector space rn. We call this the coordinate map relative to s from v to rn. So basically we're saying we can identify coordinates that are real numbers for any vector in an arbitrary vector space via this coordinate map. We have a, a change of basis problem where we want to change a basis from one vector space to a, a new basis. In order to solve this change of basis problem, we basically write the old basis as b equals u1 through un, and the new one as b prime equals u1 prime through un prime. And then for each vector v in our vector space, we look at the new coordinate vector relative to the new basis. So for each vector v and v, we take a look at the coordinate vectors relative to each basis. So here's an arbitrary coordinate vector. Instead of s, we'll look at it relative to an old basis b. And we want to take that and make it into a coordinate vector relative to the new basis b prime. So then that's what s would become. So in order to get from the vector, the coordinate vector of v relative to b to the coordinate vector of v relative to b prime, what we do is we multiply by p, p some matrix p, where the columns of p are the coordinate vectors of the old basis vectors relative to the new basis. So explicitly, p is equal to u1 expressed in terms of b prime, u2 in terms of b prime, through u uh, n in terms of b prime. So as an example, how about we consider the bases b equals u1, u2, and b prime equals u1 prime, u2 prime for r2, where u1, u2, u1 prime, and u2 prime are given over here. So let's see if we could find the transition matrix P that goes from B to B prime. So we'll write U1 in terms of U1 prime and U2 prime. So it looks like U1 is 1, 0. So if I were to take U1 prime and subtract it from U2 prime, then I get 2 minus 1 gives me the 1, and 1 minus 1 gives me the 0. So u1 must be equal to minus u1 prime plus u2 prime. We'll do the same thing for u2. We need to find some combination of the primes to express u2. So what we'll do is well, let's say u2 has 0 in the first component. So how about I multiply this by 2, and then I can subtract. So I'll take 2u1 prime minus u2 prime. And yeah, that'll work, because then the 2 minus 1 will give me a 1 there also. OK, so now that I have u1 and u2 rewritten in terms of u1 prime and u2 prime, I can write u1 in terms of the new basis b prime as minus 1, 1. Because I've got minus 1 for u1 prime and 1 for u2 prime. All I'm taking is the coefficients. That's what my coordinate vector will be. Let's do the same thing for u2. So I want to express that in terms of b prime now. So I already have it in terms of the primes. I just read off the coefficients. And that's 2 minus 1. 
Okay, so that means that my transition matrix P that goes from B to B prime is just equal to these uh, column vectors. So minus one, one, and two minus one. So if I were to take P and multiply any vector expressed in the old basis, then I would get the vector expressed in the new basis B prime. Let's do the opposite now. How about we find the transition matrix that takes us from B prime back to B? So I need to now rewrite U1 prime in terms of the original U's, but that should be pretty easy. U1 prime is just 1, 1. Each of these guys has a 0 in a different place, so I just need to add them together. So u1 prime is just u1 plus u2. Okay, how about u2 prime? So if I want to rewrite u2 prime in terms of u1 and u2, and there should be an equal sign over here, it's a little typo, then I would take, how about two of u1 and add that to one of u2, and that gives me the two, and that gives me the one. So I'll take two u1 plus one u2. Okay, so that means that I could write u1 prime in terms of my old basis as just one one, because that's the coefficients for my first equation. And I could write u2 prime in terms of my old basis as 2 1 just reading off those coefficients okay so my transition matrix from my new basis to my old one from b prime back to b is equal to 1 1 and 2 1 so that means that if I was starting with a vector expressed in terms of my new basis, I can get back where I started by multiplying by this transition matrix P. Okay, how about we let B and B prime be the bases in example one. Let's use an appropriate formula to find V of B prime, given that V of B is minus three five, or VB. Okay, so I'll write VB, or I want VB prime, I'll write that as the transition matrix P that goes from B to B prime, and I'll just multiply VB by that. We already computed the transition matrix that goes from B to B prime, that's minus 1, 1, 2, minus 1, so we'll multiply that by minus 3, 5. And we just get 13 minus 8. So that's the vector expressed in terms of the new basis vectors, B prime. If P is the transition matrix from a basis B to a basis B prime for a finite dimensional vector space V, then P is invertible, and P inverse is the transition matrix from B prime to B. We have a procedure for computing transition matrices. What we can do is form the partition matrix, where the left part of the matrix is the new basis, and the right part is the old basis, in which the basis vectors are in column form. Then we can use elementary row operations to reduce the matrix in step one to the reduced row echelon form, the resulting matrix will have the identity matrix in the left, and it will be adjoined to the transition matrix from old to new. So this is exactly what we want, and that's it. We get it. As an example, how about we uh, considered the bases B and B prime before. Let's use this new procedure to find the transition matrix from B to B prime. So what we'll do is we will form a new matrix consisting of the new basis adjoined to the old basis 
and we'll set that equal to 1, 2, 1, 1. That was my old basis for the vectors. Actually, I want to just adjoin that to, it was uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. It was the standard basis. Okay, so then I'm going to reduce that to the identity on the left. And on the right will be my new transition matrix from old to new. Okay, so I can subtract off over here to get this to become the identity. I'll subtract off two of this and then make it negative because if I subtract off two then this becomes a minus one. Make it negative become positive. I'll get one zero and I'll get minus one two and in the bottom I just need to subtract off one of those to cancel out that one and get zero. So I'll just get zero, one, and one minus one. Okay, so there we go. That means that my transition matrix is on the right. So that's B to B prime. And as before, it is equal to minus one, one, to minus one. So this gives us an alternative way of computing it in kind of like a brute force way instead of having to find some way to rewrite our basis vectors in terms of the other basis vectors. Okay, how about we do the same thing from B prime to B. So I've got my new basis, my old basis, and my new basis, in this case I'm going to B, so that's my new basis, so that's just the 1, 0, 0, 1 basis, and my old one is 1, 2, 1, 1, but notice this is very easy to solve because this is already reduced so that means that my transition matrix to go backwards is literally just the new basis, or the matrix formed by the new basis. So that's P from B prime to B, given by 1, 1, 2, 1. Again, matches what we got before. Let B equal U1 through UN be any basis for Rn, and let S equal E1 through EN be the standard basis for Rn. If the vectors in these bases are written in column form, then the transition matrix from B to S is just the basis vectors, the new ones. Basically, uh, follows pretty clearly from the remark that we just did. Obviously, that's not a proof, but it should be a little bit more convincing now that this is true, given we just saw this in the last example.